Can we talk about the history of dog whistling? Like, uh, I know uh, you, in your book, I think you talk about George Wallace, like the history of where this comes from in this country. So George Wallace is this phenomenal figure because he is he first runs for governor in 1958. And when he does so, he's actually a racial moderate. He's endorsed by the NAACP. His opponent is endorsed by the Klan. He loses. And he realizes that he loses because of racial anxiety. And he's got this incredible quote. He's, he's about to go in to deliver his concession speech on the night he's lost. And he turns to some of his cronies and he says, no other son of a bitch is ever going to out-nigger me again. <laughs> and wow. what he means is... I'm going to start using the N-word. Uh, I'm going to start being the racial reactionary, and that's how I'm going to get elected. And that is precisely what he does. So George Wallace gets elected to be governor of Alabama in 1962 by being this staunch segregationist, even though he had been a racial moderate. Being a racial moderate didn't work for getting elected, so he became this racial firebrand. But at the same time, he's elected in 1962, and nationally, he becomes a bit of a laughingstock because here he he, beco- he comes to personify the sort of red-faced, bellowing, um, uh, spittle-laced Southern politician spewing hatred about blacks. And he begins another shift where he begins to shift away from white supremacy today, tomorrow, and forever to states' rights and freedom of association, these coded terms. He's really pioneering the expression of white supremacy in coded terms that can be defended as race neutral. And here's another thing he pioneers that that, that is completely pertinent to Donald Trump. He pioneers the idea that you can flip the script on people who accuse you of racism and you can accuse them of being the real racist for mentioning race. What? That, oh my so, God, that came from George Wallace? That comes from George Wallace. I thought Wallace. that came from Reddit. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's popular there now, but yeah. George Wallace in 1968 starts saying, you know who the biggest bigots in the world are? They're the ones who accuse others of being bigots. So is Donald Trump modern day George Wallace? He, very much so. Very much <sighs> so. M- not, just, not just in the sense that he's engaging in race baiting, but in the sense that he is also something of a social moderate who's shifting to the right because it's effective. He, he comes across as a, a, a immigrant bashing carnival barker. Yeah. Okay, I got that. That's not who he is in fact. In yeah. fact, he's a thoughtful, strategic business person who excels at selling things to the public by giving them what they want. And what do they want? And how do, well, first, how does he, how does he know what they want? Because he had an aide watch Fox News for several months and report on the themes coming out of Fox News. He did wow. his market research. And then he went out and he gave the public what he wanted in terms of these racially reactionary narratives about illegal aliens and about Muslim extremists. It's interesting with him just because it feels like he's doubling down. Like I feel like other candidates will say one thing and then they'll dog whistle. So you get like, you know, oh, he seems like a, a decent person and he says that thing. But, you know, but he's really only talking about this. It's like that coded language. Like Donald Trump, when he says that he wants to build a wall, you know, when he's talking about Mexicans as rapists, like that's blunt. Like that's not really dog whistling. And is then when it? he gets like, challenged he, on that, he says, yeah, I said I want to build a wall in ways that some politicians are like, well, I didn't mean a wall. <laughs> like they start to – right, some politicians, right. when, they, when they get caught dog whistling, they pull back. But he goes, I'm going to build it twice as high now that you challenge me. But, but, but okay, is that but wait, dog but, whistling though? Because I it, think it, it is. seems blunt to me. No, no. I, I, it's, it's quite blunt, but it's still dog whistling. So think about what happened with David Duke and the Klan. Well, I have to look at the group. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. First of all, I love the fact that Jake, Jake Tapper at the end of this like, Okay, I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't think I was bringing up anything you needed to do advanced research on. <laughs> Talk about that. I saw you, so, you were nodding your so, head so like a bobblehead. So this is Donald head. Trump miscalculating. He's miscalculating. Of course he knows who David Duke is. Of course he knows who the Klan is. And he's wondering to himself, you know... If I don't condemn them, do I win more votes? And he just got it wrong because the rule with dog whistling is you got to fool two sets of people. One are your liberal critics. He's given up on that. He doesn't. He doesn't give a shit about fooling yeah. us, right? Yeah. That, that's we all hear it. Yeah. But the other is you got to fool your supporters. 
because your supporters do not want to believe that they support you because they're racist. They want to believe that they support you because they are common sense patriots who love America. And this is what Trump is always saying to them. So when Trump refuses to repudiate the Klan, his supporters got to look at themselves and say, hey, this is a guy who wants Klan support. That's yeah. not me. I'm not a racist. And it's, this, it's in this way that Trump is still dog whistling, even when he says build a wall. He says, this isn't about race. This is about the fact that we don't know who's coming across our border and it's people from every nation and, and that's all. Yeah, yeah, it's not and about, when it's yeah, Muslims, yeah. it's not, you know, some of them are good people. Oh, it's okay, but, but, but we, you can't know, take we, the chance. we can't take the chance. We got to figure out who it is. And then if they're good people, we'll, we'll let them in. Right. Mm -hmm. He's very careful never to talk in color coded terms. He does not ever say, stand up and say, I am here to ask for your vote because I intend to defend the white race, which is currently embattled by a surging tide of black and brown people. And well, he that, never says that, that speech came expressly. Off, that speech came out of your mouth really quickly. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, well, because I've been translating yeah. Trump's speeches in my mind. <laughs> That's what he's saying, but he can't say it expressly. And he never uses a racial epithet. Mm -mm.